This is the Kits and Parts Universal RF Mixer schematic. It has an internal oscillator, well on the board oscillator, crystal oscillator of 12 megahertz designed to work uh, and give you a 40 meter output when you're done. I've changed mine and I've removed the internal oscillator. I've removed all the oscillator circuitry and I'm inputting an external VFO signal on pin 2 of the tune jumper. It comes down directly into a buffer inside the SA612 so I can run an external VFO. Let me warn you, if you do that, be careful because this connector is not the same as all the other connectors he has. Most of his other connectors anyway have pin 1 and pin 3 as ground and pin 2 is plus 8. Well, if you take and hook one of your connector cables up that's made up to work with uh, standard power, you'd be putting a ground across pin 1 here and it will burn the trace out on the board unless your power supply is current limited. If you do this, your trace becomes a nice ugly black and you can see right there on the trace it no longer is conductive as I just pushed a piece of it off the, the board. It acted like a fuse. Since then I've begin using the current limited power supply which makes a lot more sense anyway. The power supply I was using when I hooked this up wrong would put out 10 amps and that trace acted like a 10 amp fuse and went up in smoke. So if you're using the tune jack for anything other than what it was designed initially be careful don't hook a ground on that left hand pin. We have our RF amplifier hooked into the mixer board and they're all powered up. Just to give you a little picture into how this thing's set up, we'll take a look at the test equipment hookup before we start out. We're using a Hewlett Packard HP 3325A function generator for the source of RF. So as you can see it's at 14.2 megahertz. Its output right now at an amplitude of minus 40 dBm and that goes down into a Hewlett Packard step attenuator. So what we can do with that, we can change the level go of RF going in. And right now we're added 10 dBm into it, or 10 dB, so we're actually putting a minus 50 dB into the RF board. The RF board has minus 50 into the RF amp, so right now it's got a 22 dB gain, so we've got about minus 30 dBm going into the mixer board. The output of the mixer board is hooked to the scope probe, and what that does is right now that allows me a high input impedance instead of running directly into the spectrum analyzer. The output of this board is designed to go into a 200 ohm input into the crystal filter with a 200 ohm input. So when I hook the spectrum analyzer and I really load it down because it's got a 50 ohm input into it. So I go through the scope probe into the 7904 and I come out of the scope of the signal out jack which is a higher impedance output and I feed it down to the spectrum analyzer. For a VFO, I'm just using another HP function generator. So I've got all the signals available to me. I've got the board up and running. And let's talk about mixers first. Mixers device that you put two signals in and it generates new signals out. 
In order to be a mixer, it has to be some kind of nonlinear device, which means that the output has to be different than the input. If I have a linear amplifier, the output looks just like the input, only bigger. Well, with a mixer, the output's going to look different than the input. The process of doing that, if I were to put a sine wave in and I got a pure undistorted sine wave out, that would be a linear amplifier. If I put it in and I got a distorted waveform out, it would be a nonlinear amplifier. Nonlinear amplification creates new frequencies. That's what causes the waveform to look different, is the addition of new frequencies. We could use a diode for a mixer, and a lot of inexpensive receivers do. A diode conducts in one direction and doesn't in the other direction, so you get either a positive going waveform out or a negative going waveform out. So that's a distortion. So the process of distortion creates new frequencies. What we're doing here, seeing on the spectrum analyzer, each division on this screen is worth 10 megahertz. We put in two different frequencies and we want to get our IF frequency out. We want to put the VFO frequency in, which in this case is 4.2 megahertz right here. We also put in 14 megahertz, 14.2, and that's this frequency right here. So that's the two original frequencies that we put in. Everything else has been generated by putting those signals in. This frequency here is 10 megahertz, that's our IF. That's the 14.2 megahertz minus the 4 megahertz. It gives me 10 megahertz. What we also have right is right here is the image frequency. The image frequency is the VFO, in this case, the VFO frequency plus the desired signal frequency. So I have 14.2 megahertz here plus the 4 megahertz VFO gives me 18.2 megahertz here. That's the image frequency. We want to filter that out. We don't want that to be there because no matter what frequency I put in, if I put in 15 megahertz and I put in 5 megahertz for a VFO, I would get my 10 megahertz out, but I'd get my also get my 15 megahertz plus the 5 meg VFO. So I'd get 20 meg out, which would be the image frequency. We don't want that. So the image frequency will pass through our receiver and our mixer just like it was the desired frequency. So it's the job of the bandpass filter on the front end of the receiver to get rid of the image frequency. What we also have here is probably about 28 megahertz, which is the second harmonic of our input frequency. We have 30 megahertz here, which is the third harmonic of our IF frequency. And this is probably about three times, this looks like about 30 some megahertz. So it's a mixture of other, other signals, all these things mixed together. Now we can change the amount of frequencies there by changing the amount of drive. I'm going to put more, more drive into the front end of the receiver. And when I do that you see more harmonics come up. They come up bigger. If I put in less, I get less out. So what's important is we want to have a front end filter to eliminate the image frequency right here. And we want what we want out is this frequency, our 10, our 10 megahertz IF frequency. Now you'll hear mixers, single balance mixers, and double balance mixers. A standard mixer is going to put out the two original frequencies that went in, plus the sum of the original frequencies, plus the difference of the original frequencies, plus and minus harmonics of all that. If I go to a single balance mixer, it's going to eliminate one of the input frequencies, or it's going to at least attenuate it. This is a double balance mixer, so what that says is it's going to attenuate the two original input frequencies. Here's the VFO frequency. 
and I can demonstrate that I'm going to increase the amount of VFO drive and you see it changes the amount of all the harm all the output of the device so it's going to attenuate that that so it's going to attenuate the VFO frequency and it does it's going to attenuate the original RF frequency of 14.2 megahertz and it does so the biggest output that we see is the desired IF frequency here at 10 megahertz and the image frequency What I've done is gone to the standard spectrum analyzer display and what I have in the middle is our 10 megahertz IF frequency. Now we can move that by changing the input frequency. Right now it's displaying 5 kilohertz per division so I'm going to go up to my generator and I'm going to increase the frequency a kilohertz at a time. Right now I'm at 14.2. Here's 14.201, 2, 3, 4, 5. And you notice it moved one division. So what I would normally do to bring that back if I wanted to tune to 14.205 is I would adjust the VFO frequency and it's a little coarse on this generator but I can if I'm real careful tune it back to where I have 10 megahertz out to go into my IF so if I wanted to listen to 14.350 I'll set in 14.350 Now what I have to do is tune my VFO to 4.350 and that's hard to do here because I don't have a frequency display on it but here it comes. So now my receiver is tuned to 14.350 and anything that was coming in at that frequency would be passed on into the IF strip. The IF is going to be real narrow. It's going to be looking for signals and only respond to signals that are with about plus or minus 1.25 kilohertz from the desired frequency. So when we tune in a frequency, that will be the only signals that will pass on to the IF will be the ones that will pass through the 10 megahertz IF filter. So we can see the mixer mixing actions working I can decrease the input there's 10 dB less and it dropped down 10 dB there's 10 dB less right now the RF input is going to be got 40 dBm minus 40 dBm out of the generator and I have an additional 40 dBm dialed in so at this point with minus 80 dBm that's about a 20 microvolt signal that's going in. If I reduce it 10 more dB, I don't get 10 dB reduction here. And as I reduce more, it really doesn't reduce much more. Part of the reason there is the leads I've got hanging around makes it real hard to input a real low value into it. So what we would have to do if I wanted to input a low value is get everything all shielded individually. But you can see it worked down to that point. It's 10 dB steps. And at this point, it's overdriving it a little bit. So our mixer's working. It's hooked to the RF amp. We're ready to go on to the next step. The next step will be the IF filter and the IF amplifier. So from the RF test bench, we'll bid you farewell for right now. We'll be back with more modules, more tests, and hopefully you're learning something from all these. The modules are a very good basic way to learn electronics one step at a time, at least communication electronics. If you have some background in electronics, it makes it easier. 
if you don't have the test equipment, a good place to watch is on eBay. Much of my equipment came from eBay. Most of it worked when I got it, but not all of it. So be careful and try to get equipment that says it does work and has a right of return. It'll cost you a little more, but that way you know you don't get junk. So bye for now, and what we'll be doing next will probably be the IF amplifier. I have the IF amplifier working. I'm still working on the filter band pass to get it proper. So we'll see you from the RF test bench. See you later, 73s.